how's it going dudes so I was taking apart my PM2 when I realized that I should probably film it so that way if any of you have not taken apart a Spyderco paramilitary 2 before you can watch this video and learn how to do it and it's pretty self-explanatory but I know when I take apart a knife for the first time, I usually watch a disassembly video just to make sure I'm not going to be surprised by any weird mechanics or, um, you know, just so uh, I I'm prepared and kind of know generally what, um, what to expect. So let's do it. Um, this, uh, this knife was my work carry knife for a little while. Uh, but I recently acquired a Spyderco Manix 2, and that has become my primary work knife along with the Mini Adamus. So I want to clean this baby out, get all the grit out of the pivot area, and it'll be, you know, my weekend's knife or, you know, anything besides work, uh, because I get a lot of grit and grime in my knives at work and I want to get this one nice and clean and ready to use. So all I've done um, so far is just take out all the screws on the show side. We have two um, two body screws that are uh, T8s and a pivot screw which is a T10. So I just pop those out and let's take off the scale here. This is going to be uh, a little bit more difficult if you're taking apart the knife for the first time. If you're taking apart the knife for the first time, um, you're going to see a lanyard tube um, that is actually kind of peened over on the ends. And you're not going to be able to pull the scale off. You're just going to be able to rotate the scale this way. Uh, what I did when I replaced the stock G10 scales is I had to almost break it out and get it out and, um, you know, put my new scales on. And something I didn't know and something I wish someone had told me or I, I wish I had looked it up is when you replace the scales on a Spyderco knife, one that has a lanyard tube, you need to buy a new lanyard tube because the one that you get that's in the stock knife is all peened over and when you crack off that G10 scale it's gonna mess it up it's gonna ruin it and when you go to put it back together if you try to use the old tube it just it's not gonna work so uh, I got these scales my new ones from Phytanium they sell lanyard tubes there for the PM2 and Para 3 pretty cheap I think I don't know 10 12 bucks so make sure you get that extra lanyard tube at the same time you get your new scales. But I don't have that, I just have a brass uh, lanyard plug instead. So let's pop off the liner, the uh, lock bar side of the liner. Let's get some paper towel, clean all the gunk off, clean off the detent ball area. Everything nice and clean. And set that aside. Put my screws up here. I really should have a, a kind of a takedown mat because they have, you know, individual cubbies for all your screws, which is really helpful. What is that? There's some gunk on there. I don't know what that is. Let's take out my backspacer. This one just should just pop right out. Actually, you know what? Let me take the blade out first so I don't cut myself. You're going to see these bronze washers on either side of the blade. You're going to be very careful with those. You don't want to bend them or tweak them in any way. Now let's get my backspacer off. There we go. Yeah, it just clicks off. Set that aside. Take my lanyard plug out. Now, if we want to get this side of the liner off, we're going to have to take these screws out as well. Um, I don't think I need to do that because I don't think there's going to be any dirt or anything really underneath here. 
What I'm mainly concerned about is getting all the grime and dirt out of this pivot area. So let's see if this bronze washer will just fall off. No. Use my fingernail to get it. Hmm. Maybe I will have to take that pivot out. Yeah, I might have to. Take the pivot out. And we can get our washer. I'm seeing some remnants of some, some, what's it called? I'm blanking. Um, Loctite. I'm seeing some Loctite residue. I want to just clean out. You know what? Let me get my Leatherman out. Yeah. Scraper. Actually, no. I have a nice little flathead here. I'll use that. I don't always put Loctite, uh, Loctite on my knives, but I think... If I recall correctly, I put it on this knife because the pivot would periodically get loose. And so I just put some Loctite on there so it wouldn't keep moving around. You always want to lose, use a blue Loctite, not the red stuff. The red stuff is too strong and you'll never be able to get your screws out again without really going to town on them, possibly stripping them. So just cleaning out the Loctite residue here. I don't have to get it perfect. All right, I think that's good enough. Let's see if there's any in here. Yeah, there's a little bit. Get that out of there. Come on, little guy, there it goes. I usually use Q-tips to kind of get in these small areas, but I don't happen to have any here. So it'll be all right. I'm just gonna use the paper towel and clean up all inside here. Make sure there's no gunk. That looks pretty good. All right, let's look at the blade here. <clears throat> Clean off the whole tang area. So there's the detent ball path. You can see. Can you see it? Yeah, kind of. There's a track here where the detent ball rubs against onto the on the blade as it it's uh, opening and closing. Clean off the blade here. Did I get everything? Make sure you get all the nicks and crannies. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, as far as these washers go, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that I use to get them nice and shined up and smooth. So let me go get something real quick. This here is a strop. It's used to, uh, after you're done sharpening, you know, you're gonna wanna run your knife over this. It's just leather with some stropping compound on it. And it just kind of cleans up your edge, get rid gets rid of any burrs. Um, but right now I'm gonna be using it to kind of shine up my washers a little bit. So I'm gonna put it on there like that and just kind of back and forth, rub it in there a little bit. This isn't really taking away any material out of the washer. It's just it's just putting a finish on it. You wouldn't want to harm the integrity of the washer at all. If you you know took a wire wheel to it or something, that would not be a good idea. So I'll just do that a couple times, both sides. 
I've never seen anyone do this, so if this is a really bad idea, tell me <laughs> in the comments. But it's worked great for me so far, so I, I think it's all right. I think it's perfectly fine. Okay, that should be good. You want to be careful not to bend these things. Let's clean it off. And you can see it's nice and shiny now. That should help improve the action on the knife. Not by a whole lot, but to some degree. Since I don't have a Q-tip, let me make my own here so I can get in the center of that washer do something like that what do you think about that there buddy perfect all right let's do the other one come on Lately, I've been moving away from taking knives with ball bearings in the pivots with me to work because I end up having to clean them out too often. And even though before I go home after work, I usually blow them out with compressed air. Um, just, you know, there's a greediness that gets in them. And I think it's pretty unavoidable with uh, ball, bearing, uh, ball bearing knives. So... I'm getting back to just carrying knives using phosphor bronze washers instead. It's, um, they're much better at resisting grit and grime. Okay, our washers are nice and shined up. Whoopsie. Our washers are nice and shined up. So it is time to reassemble. Let's get our lube out. I'm not sure even sure what brand of lube this is. This is similar to um, the Tough Glide I have at home. Uh, but I, as far as I can tell, it's pretty much the same as a Tough Glide. So this is one that I just carry around in my little EDC bag, which is what I have with me at the moment. So that's what we're gonna use. Get some more paper towel. All right, so. One more time on the blade. Everything looks good. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So I'm going to put a couple little drops of oil in the pivot area. Not too much. That might even be too much. Move around with my pinky a little bit. And I'm going to, well, you know what? Um, yeah, I should put my pivot in first. So let's see, there's a little notch on one side. And you'll see there's a notch in the scale there. So you want to make sure to line that up correctly. It'll only go in one way. Just like that. Is it in there? Going on here. Yeah, that's gotta be right. There we go. Let's get our pivot screw. Stick it on the back side. You can hold it in with your finger. You can get this one as tight as you want. Looks like there's a little gap. See that? I wonder what that is. Did I not put it in right? Well, now it's stuck in there. Uh-oh. I hope I didn't... 
I hope I didn't mess something up here. I don't know what's going on. There it goes. I wonder if there's a little bit of Loctite still in there. Why is it not wanting to cooperate? Let's get our pivot, or our notch and our pivot lined up. Right there, it should be perfect. Why is it not sitting flat? What is happening? Hmm. I think there's a little bit of residue in there still. Let's see. really weird. Well, I wonder if that'll just suck itself in when I tighten everything down, you think? What do you think, guys? I know you can't talk to me right now, but... What do you think of that? Hmm, let me get a flashlight. Yeah, it looks pretty clean in there. Is there something on here? Oh, I think I see it. There's a glob of Loctite right there that I just got off. <clears throat> Let's see if that did it. Cross your fingers. Cross your fingies. Hmm. No. Well, you know what? I say we put the knife together and hope for the best. That's a that's a philosophy I've come to use quite a bit in life. At work. Um, God damn it. Um, at work, I'm almost weekly faced with a project or, you know, something that I really don't know how to do at all. And I just go for it. And usually, usually it works out. But I don't like how that's sitting on there. You guys see that? That's concerning. It's very concerning. Well, let's put the knife together. So we're gonna drop some lube right there like we did before drop our washer on oh you know what okay guys i'm an idiot the reason there's a little gap in there is because that's where the washer goes oh my god yeah <sighs> Sorry guys, I should have maybe done a little refresher before I started. So, here's how we're gonna have to do it. Is there still lube on there? Yeah, okay. First, you're gonna put your washer there. Then, you're going to get your pivot, find the notch in it, line it up with where it needs to be, Stick it in there. <laughs> Hold it with your finger. Flip it over. Put your screw in. <laughs> it's okay, Floki. No barking. <laughs> and there, look at that. Perfect. No gap. Sitting flush. Everything's good. It's okay, Floki. No barking, okay? So, cool, cool. Alright. We're back in action. Now... Let's get our blade 
and it goes this way. We're gonna put a couple little droppy drops around the area, the pivot area, and let's drop our blade on, like so. Very good. Next, let's put a little bit of oil on the detent ball track area. That was a little too much, so I'm going to spread that around like a so. Just like that. Then we're gonna drop our second washer on. Then we're going to grab our liner and it goes, yep, goes that way. I'm going to put a little drop of oil on the pivot ball, like so. And then, let's drop it on there. Oh, I need my plug. The, um, the backspacer can be put on after the knife is together, so I don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, everything is lined up. I'm going to grab my scale, put it on top there, and then push down gently until I hear a snap. There, I hear the snap. Grab my pivot screw, stick it in, tighten it down, not all the way, but just to hold the knife together. Grab my body screws. Stick them on in there. Change my bit. And we are almost completely done. We're back together. It locks up like it should. Now I'm going to tighten down my body screws. Not too tight, just very snug. Check the other side even though we didn't mess with those ones. Now let's tighten up, oh, I need to change the bit. Let's tighten up the pivot that, um, you know, that we were messing around with first, the one on the clip side. And then this one is the one that we're gonna mess around with to get our centering and our action right. So let's look at our centering. Centering is okay. Let's try the action. Oh, too stiff. Let's back that off. Any blade play? Nope. None. Cool. Before I took uh, it apart and cleaned it just now, I had a little bit of blade play um, with this good of action. So now I have no blade play and the action is still good. So that is very good. My centering is a little bit off. You know what, let me try to adjust that. I'm gonna show you guys how to adjust uh, an off-centered blade really quick. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is tighten down your pivot pretty tight, not uber, uber tight, but pretty tight. Tighten that down, open up your blade halfway, and you're gonna want to just loosen up your body screws. You're not gonna take them out. Just loosen them up. You can do all four. You want to close your blade and you're going to want to use your finger to push the blade in the direction that you want it to go. So you're going to overcorrect it in the way you want it to go. And you're going to tighten up your body screws again while you're pushing that blade over. Again, it's not going to be centered as you're pushing it because you're overcorrecting. 
Now let's loosen our pivot. Still a little stiff. And our centering is perfect. Action's a little stiff still. It's kind of weird. Make sure I didn't over tighten these. Oops. Our centering is just about good. It's a little off, but I'm gonna call that good. Now we can stick in our backspacer. This thing's pretty cool. It's just a, a 3D printed one that I bought off of somebody. Uh, my brother-in-law has a 3D printer, and I was thinking if I could find the plans for these, it'd be kind of cool, because I'm not sure I like the white. Um, but I bet I could print out backspacers for a bunch of different knives. I wonder if they're, you can find plans for different knives online for the 3D printer. It'd be kind of cool. So there you have it, folks. Action is great. Lock up. Totally solid. Rock solid. It was a success. Very happy. There you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.